everybody, it's Sonya Lene and welcome back to my channel. Today is Tuesday, but uh, we're going to do Married Life Monday, okay? <laughs> um, yesterday was a very long day for me. I was not feeling my best, but y'all know I am determined to get Married Life Monday out every week, no matter what, okay? So yes, today we are doing Married Life Monday on Tuesday. Okay, all right, but before I get started, I want you guys to go ahead and thumbs up the video, uh-huh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, become a part of our family. Y'all know how we do it over here. For those of you who are already a part of the family, get down in the comments and welcome our new family members, okay, because we got, we, they coming, y'all see the subscribers going up, they coming. Okay? All right? So, welcome. All right? And, you know, and in the church, we say we welcome you once. We welcome you twice. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, y'all, I'm just being goofy. As y'all can see, I am not on my love seat. I am actually in my daughter's room. My daughter has a YouTube channel, and this is like her background or whatever. So, I'm in her room today because I just kind of... Didn't have time to do a lot of setup because I do have a job, y'all, and I got to go to work tonight. So I wanted to kind of get it done as quickly as possible. I feel like this light is in my, let me see. I feel like this light is in my face. That might look a little better. But anyway, we'll work it out next week, okay, y'all? Y'all know we, we, we doing some things, okay? So just be patient with me, okay? Because God ain't through with me yet. Okay. Anyway, today we are talking about marriage vows. Okay. And when I went through, um, I went to Google, uh, the marriage vows because of course I'm not a minister, so I don't have the book. Okay. So I went to Google the marriage vows and I come to realize that a lot of different religions have their own marriage vows. And that was kind of crazy. Cause I was like, you know what? I just kind of want to go through the marriage vows, break them down, see what is it, you know, why is it so hard for a lot of people to, you know, hold on to their vows? You know, what? what's so hard about it? So I wanted to kind of break it down and kind of see, you know, what we working with here, okay? But anyway, I just went and found the basic ones. Now, there are plenty, y'all. They got the Episcopal, they got the Methodist, the Presbyterian, the Lutheran, the Catholic wedding vows, Hindu wedding vows, Jewish wedding vows, um, Reform, cons Conservative, Muslim, Eastern Orthodox, like non-denominational, Quaker. What is Quaker? I didn't even... I thought that was an old meal. But anyway, Unitarian, like for real, for real, y'all. It's like every religion just got their own vows. I ain't finna take out the time to read them. If y'all want me to take out the time to go through all of those wedding vows just to see what the difference is in, in, in all of them, you know, y'all drop down in the comments and let me know and we'll go through them one day, okay? But right now, I'm just gonna go with the basic wedding vows that you know the majority of people the majority of weddings i've been to they just kind of read this one here okay so we're gonna go through it and i just want to see like like what because a lot of people are having problems a lot of people are really really struggling in their marriage to kind of hold on to their vows and kind of you know hold true to what they stood up and said at their wedding that they were going to do okay nobody put a gun to your head and made you say it you said it okay and either you meant it or you didn't okay i know y'all can kind of hear but i'm a little mm -hmm. under the weather okay so y'all pray for me all right but we're gonna get this video done all right but anyway so i'm gonna read the basic wedding vows Okay, and then we're going to kind of just go through it and break it down, okay? And I'm just going to tell you how I feel about it, all right? We don't need to make this thing harder than what it really is. You know, people have to get married to who they love, and then you accept each other's differences. And if you can't do that, then don't get married, okay? Basic uh, wedding vows. It says, I 
take the, which, you know, they put the names there. So I'm just going to use me and Kevin, okay? I, Sonia, take the Kevin to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part according to God's holy ordinance. And thereto I pledge thee my faith. Okay. And then it also says, or pledge myself to you. Because sometimes mm -hmm. people say, I pledge thee my faith, or I pledge thee my love, or I pledge myself to you. Okay, so we, that's fine, okay? But anyway, let's go from the beginning, all right? You you, you put your name there. I, thee, I, Sonia, take thee, Kevin. Okay, so whatever your name is, and whatever your husband name is, or whatever your name is, whatever your wife's name is, put your name there, okay? All right, so I take thee to be my wedded husband we married we know what that means that's real easy you know we at a wedding and you 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 the husband i'm the wife okay okay to have and to hold <laughs> y'all know what that mean now it, it a lot of people could see it a different a lot of different ways but to have to have Okay, like, okay, so if, if I got a piece of candy, right, and you want a piece, what you gonna ask me? Can I have a piece? And once I give you that piece of candy, it belongs to you. It's yours. To have. Okay? It belongs to you. At this point, you own it. And so that's the reason why to have means to own. Now you take it how you want to take it, okay? But that's why two people are saying the vows, husband and wife, okay? We both own each other. You know, once we sign our life away to each other, we, we belong to each other. So to have and to hold. So that means... I own you and I'm keeping you. Hold on to it. Keep. Hold means to keep. Y'all know. <laughs> I'm teaching y'all today, okay? I'm breaking it down. <laughs> anyway, to have and to hold. So we got that part, right? Now, we can't get to the rest of it until we get past the fact that... Until we get past... Until we understand have and hold. Let's just say that. Okay, so we cannot go any further because the most important part is at the beginning. Okay, once you say to have and to hold, then you can move forward. But if you can't say that, yes, when you get married, you belong to each other. You are responsible for each other. You know, mom and daddy always going to be mom and daddy, but y'all got to be mom and daddy to each other now because that's where the responsibility lies now. Legally, you're responsible for one another. Okay? And if you can't handle that legal responsibility, then you probably need to not get married because it's very important. Okay? Can't get married about you can't get married to somebody you don't care about because you're responsible for them. Okay, if something happened to that person, you make decisions about their life if they can't make decisions for themselves. Make sure that's the person who you want to make decisions for. Okay? All right, so we got to have and to hold. I done talk so long, the doggone thing done went off my phone. Hold on. Okay. To have and to hold from this day forward, okay? For better, for worse. I know people deal with this a lot, okay? For better, for worse. Okay, in a marriage, in life period, sometimes things get better, sometimes things get worse. You can't go running every single time 
you feel like it's not working out in your favor. Okay, you can't get married. See, that's why when we dealt with, last week when we dealt with marrying for love or money, you know, we said, yes, we do need to love a person. But we don't want to be broke. We don't want to be, you know, incompatible. We, we want to marry our life partner. Okay? Um, but at the same time, you got these people out here who will get married because the person has great things going for themselves. I ain't judging. You get married because the person has great things going for themselves, but you don't love them enough to stay with them when they down. So love, money, respect, power, all of that stuff go together. Make sure that you got it stacked up how you want it to be before you get married because you got to make sure that love is there. Love is very important because love has to hold you when you down. You know, everybody can understand the for better part, but for worse, sometimes things get worse. And I can go into a whole, whole lot of stuff when it comes to for better or for worse. Because some people think that if your husband go upside your head, that's the worst. No, I think you can leave at that point. <laughs> you know, nobody said that we was going to be abused. Okay, that and I, I ain't. I read these vows. Did y'all just hear me read them? I read them. Nobody said, you know, go upside nobody's head. Okay, at that point, deuces. Okay, NT way. All right, I lost it. Okay, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor. Okay, I think better, worse, and richer and poor kind of go together, but kind of not because you got, um. For, for better or worse, it could be health problems. It could be uh, family, you know, issues. Parents, you know, parents get sick and, you know, sometimes you have to shut everything down and focus on one thing and then your family feels a little neglected or whatever, whatever. But for better or for worse, that's how I look at that part. Now, for richer or for poor, okay, you can get with somebody and they rich. And then things can happen and you ain't got much money. You can't break up because something happened. Okay? You just got to have a plan. That's why you got to marry somebody with the same, you know, work ethic and ambition as you. Because you can't just focus on one thing. Now, my husband and I, we are firm believers in multiple streams of income. Okay, you can't let, you can't depend on one source of income anymore. This is 2019, guys. Get out here and grind. Get out here and hustle. Okay, because that will put a strain on your marriage when you don't know where your next meal is coming from or your baby need new shoes because they too tight or, you know, you just never know. Get out here and make some money, okay? It's not all about money, but it's about money, y'all. You need money to live before you do anything else. So, for richer, and everybody like the for richer part, for poor. Now, when you get married, it's for richer, for poor. But, you got to come together to make sure you don't go to the poor part, okay? Now, sometimes, stuff just happens. Life happens. Things get shut down. I mean, the government shut down right now. And I'm sure some marriages is struggling because of that, okay? But that's the reason why I said multiple streams of income. Okay, we ain't really sleeping in 2019 because we got to work. We got stuff to do. Okay, y'all get out here and make some money so it won't strain on your marriage. But you got to be together for rich or for poor because this is the person that you decided that you wanted to, to recite these vows with. Okay, do that. Okay, 
So we've already dealt with to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for rich, for poor, in sickness and in health. You got to ride this thing out. You got to ride it out. Now, I didn't want to get with nobody sick, but if my husband just so happened to got sick, get sick now, oh, mama going to take care of daddy, okay? We got you got to know and love and understand, you know, your marriage. You gotta understand who you with. You gotta understand that no matter what happens, you gotta step up. No matter what. It's things get life gets hard. Things get hard. Things get tough. You know, we got kids and everything. So yeah. In sickness and in health. If I get sick, I'm going to want my husband to take care of me. So I'm going to do the same for him. I love my husband. And, and and I'm here for it. You know, I meant what I said when I, when, I, when I said my vows. Because I knew who I was getting with. You know what I'm saying? It makes a difference. You just can't go marrying anybody and then think it's okay to, you know kind of skip over some vows because you know it you feel like it really don't apply to you all of it applies to you and all of it applies to your partner okay okay pumpkin all right so in sickness and in health to love and to cherish now we know what that means we already got that we already you know we already established that we have to love and when it comes to cherishing, you know, when I when I think of to love and to cherish, when I think of to cherish a person, it means that you just you they're 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 that person that you're googling with. They're that person that you you how do I put it? Like, they mean so much to you. It's like the old pictures that your grandma have. You cherish those. Like, you're going to keep them. You're going to hold them close to your heart. And that's how I feel about my husband. Like, he's the closest thing to my heart. I love him. I cherish him. He's very important to me. And when, 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 when you say you cherish a person, you prioritize them. They're at the top of your list. Okay, my husband is at the top of my list. I cherish him. He is the closest thing to my heart. And so when I say that, I need y'all to understand where I'm going. Okay, I got daddy back. Okay, don't don't come for daddy because mama got his back. Love and to cherish. Okay, need I say more? <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, loving to cherish till death do us part. Now, even I struggle with this a little bit, okay? Because we was we was just talking about um, my hand. I don't like the uh, I don't like the the shadow in this thing. But anyway, we were just talking about um the abuse side of, of marriage. Like, you get with somebody, they abuse you. This is what I feel about that. When you marry a person, you marry the person that you know, that it's like, it's almost like when you marry somebody and then later on in the marriage, they beating up on you, talking about you, verbally abusing you, mentally abusing you, you know, all of that. That's not the person you marry. You have been hoodwinked. You have been tricked. And I feel like because of that, you have the right to walk away. Okay? That's just me. I might be wrong. But I feel like you have the right to walk away. Now. <laughs> okay. So, till death do us part. I believe firmly in it. But like I said, when you are with the person you marry. 
the person that made you happy, the person that loved you. Not saying that you're not going to have some problems. You're going to have some problems. But when that person turned into a monster, you didn't marry no monster. Nobody wanted to marry. Nobody ever wanted to marry a monster. Nobody ever said that, you know, I want to be with the person that's going to beat me upside my head. Nobody ever said that. Let me tell y'all something. If daddy hit me one time, I'm out. And as much as I love to talk to y'all about marriage, he hit me one time. I'm going to be talking to y'all about divorce. Okay? Because, yeah, that's not who I married. You know what I'm saying? I took my time to get to know this man. And if he just so happened to switch up on me, then we done because that's not who I married. Now, y'all may feel like I'm wrong. Because let me tell y'all something. I love my husband and I plan to ride this thing out to the wheels fall off. Meaning to death do us part. But I will not be hit. I will not be abused. Because I'm a good wife. I love my husband. Like I said, I cherish my husband. I give my all, my whole heart to my husband. And if I'm going to be that good to you. I'm not going to let you be any kind of anything less than good to me. It's got to be fair, honey. It's got to work both ways. Okay. Okay. All right. Anyway, y'all, I'm not going to do too much. Okay. Till death do us part. And then after that, it says, according to God's, y'all pray for me. According to God's holy ordinance, and thereto I pledge thee my faith, or I pledge myself to you. You know, when it comes to that, a lot of people who get married write their own vows because they don't believe in, you know, the ordinance of God. Y'all are so tired. Y'all pray for me. I don't know what's going on. Got work though. Anyway, a lot of people don't believe in God or believe in the in in what the Bible says about marriage. Okay, we I don't debate those things. I don't you know because people grew up differently, have different life experiences. I believe in God. I believe what the Word says about marriage. I believe it, okay? But I will never go back and forth with anybody because everybody came up different. A lot of people came up not knowing who God is or not knowing of God because they were not in that environment. So I don't debate those things. But this is my channel and I'm going to talk about how I feel about certain things. And most of the time, 99.5% of the time, God is involved. Um, I will express my love for God. And, you know, I don't believe in any marriage. And this is just what I believe. I don't believe any marriage uh, can survive without God. I just don't believe that. I don't. You got to have faith. You got to have something to hold on to together. Or else you're going to crash and burn. And you're going to end up in divorce court really quick. Because you're not going to know which road to take. So... But anyway, um, thank y'all so much for watching my channel. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. Um, I wanted to kind of talk about the marriage vows. And um, I hope that I made sense here. Um, but I just wanted to kind of figure out why is it so hard for people to hold on to their vows? Why is it so hard for people to... to um, you know, abide by your marriage vows. I mean, you said them, you're married, you said them, 
why is it so hard for you to hold on to them and, and abide by them? Um, apply them to your life, you know, and, and apply them to your marriage. Um, y'all drop down in the comments and let me know how y'all feel about the marriage vows. And, you know, I tried to break it down piece by piece. So, like, if it's one part of it that you agree with or disagree with, or if I said something that doesn't make sense about it, or if you agree with my my views on it, or disagree with my views on it, let's talk about it in the comment section. I'm here for it. Y'all know I like to go, you know, I, I like to converse with you guys in the comment section. So, you know, drop down in the comments and just let me know how you feel about this video, all right? All right, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. And y'all, hit the thumbs up. I like to see that people like or dislike the video. If you don't like the video, it's okay to hit the thumbs down. I won't be mad. I just want to know what you guys are into, okay? All right, I got over 1,000 subscribers. Where y'all at? I need y'all interacting. I want y'all to comment and let me know how y'all feel. I'm seeing that the views are going up. But I'm not seeing the interaction. Y'all know I want to interact with y'all. I love talking to y'all. I love hanging out with y'all. So anyway, until next time, guys. Bye.